open your Bibles with me to 1 Peter 2, verse 9. Okay, I'm sorry, this is going to bother me. First Peter 2, verse 9 in the New Living Translation. And could you all please stand, not as an act of religion, but as an act of reverence for our guest of honor. First Peter 2, 9. You guys have it on the screens? Okay. First Peter 2, 9 in the New Living Translation. But you are not like that, for you are a chosen people. You are a royal priest, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Heavenly Father, I just praise and thank you, Lord God. I thank you for the word that you have given me, Lord God. I am your yielded vessel, Lord God. I thank you for giving me the tongue of the learned, Lord, that I should know how to speak a word in season for those who are weary, Lord God. I praise and I thank you, Father God, for each and every experience that led me to this point, Lord. And I just want to be pleasing to you, God. I thank you, Father God, that no flesh will glory in your sight. It's not the same without you, God. I ask you to have your presence here, Lord God. And Father God, I just thank you that your word that says, none comes unless the spirit draws. So I praise you, Father God, for your presence in advance. I thank you, Father God, for thinking through my mind and speaking through my mouth and removing my own idiosyncrasies, Lord God, and filtering through my own human spirit, Lord. We just want you, God. We just want to hear from you, God. In the name of Jesus, I thank you for each and every person represented here, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that you remove any distractions, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I just praise and I thank you, Father God, that we are on this journey together. I thank you, Father God, that there is no big eyes and no little U's in this place, Lord, but that you are the master. You are the Messiah. And we lift you high on all the earth for all the world to see. In Jesus' name I pray. You may be seated. So as I finally said yes to um, God, for one, it's only been 75,000 years, but um, yes, but to my husband and, and honestly to myself for my purpose, I was wondering what would God have me to speak on for, I mean, this is not the first time I've been in this position, but for the first time, what he would have me to say. But let me rewind a little bit because I do want to acknowledge my family. I love my family so much. I would not be who I am, where I am in whatever position that he has called me in without my family. So I just want to say I love y'all. Thank y'all. I love my husband. I thank God for the visionary that he is. I thank God that I trust him. I thank God for the Holy Spirit that's inside of him. And I appreciate him. I respect him. I reverence him. I honor him. And I, I, I kind of like him. So I'm keeping him. So um, and then I want to acknowledge also my sister. My sister, as I thought about standing up here, like y'all see my sister doing pastoral and y'all know, but she is absolutely the bomb what I know from talking to my sister's friends is that she thinks that I'm the bomb so today I just want to be the bomb that my little sister thinks I am so sissy I love you but as I began to think about what I was going to talk about it has been the last maybe two to three years where I have not had and don't I, we not going to play games today <laughs> we're going to be honest I have not had the best experiences with Christians. And this is not a message to beat up the church at all. It is a message and a call to improve, to do better, to be higher in him, and to be like Christ, right? That's the goal, right? So for those of you who don't know, we got a word years ago. We say it around here all the time that we would not be a duplication of another ministry, but a duplication of what? His son. And so being a duplication of his son, you have to know who his son is, right? And so as we're learning to, to find out who his son is, 
I'm learning who his son is not. And the body of Christ has not been looking very much like his son. And so what I want to talk about today is the body of Christ here in dominion, the body of Christ in dominion and the universal church, amen, because we have work to do. So as I was thinking about what I was going to title this, I kept saying, because this kept being my experience over and over and over and over again, nasty Christians. But how many of you all know that's the oxymoron, right? You can't be nasty and a Christian. You got to choose. We got to choose, right? So you know the Holy Spirit has he is. He's so kind and he's so gentle. He switched that thing around on me and said, you're not going to call it that. You're going to call it what happened to you. Can you guys put those pictures up, please? What happened to you? That's me. That's me when I was a little girl. That's another one. That's me. That's me before the world told me who I was and who I was not. And before I became a nasty Christian, those are me. And my cousin, my sister, probably going to get me on that one. I'm sorry. Sorry. Sherelle, Kiana, that's us for Easter. And as I began to take this journey, um, I was in my parents' uh, crawl space, and we were going through pictures. And I found so many pictures of me as a little girl that I even forgot that I had taken. But it took me about two days to get through it because I was having a so many different emotions, thinking about looking back on my life and and the pain and the things that I've gone through and the depression and running from what I knew that I knew that God called me to do and to be. So I began to study, well, I've been studying for a while, but I began to study specifically after I came across those pictures on healing. Um, Because years ago, God told me that I was a healer, but I didn't know exactly what that means. And to be quite honest with you, I still don't know exactly what that means. I'm just taking a step. And I guess he's going to show me this staircase once I get there. Um, When I looked up heal, it meant to become sound or healthy again, to make free from injury or disease, to revive or cure. And I am in this process of renewing my mind for when I hear people say that they are Christian, because when I hear people say they are Christian, you know, like on the movies, I hear their mouth say they are Christian, but in my head I hear, I like Christmas. (laughs) I'm a Christian. I like Christmas. Because... Why? It, it does, the, the behavior does not line up with what I believe Christ is, who I believe Christ is. Not that I just believe it, but who his word says he is. I can't reconcile the two. And I've noticed that in my own life at times. There have been times when it, I have not been very Christ-like, right? So I, I want to keep saying that because I don't want you to make you all, I don't want to make you all think that I'm you, 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 you. We're all in this together, right? Because there are times when we can look back on our lives when we have not represented Christ in his very best, have we? Growing up, my mother had a friend. She had a daughter. I went to spend the night at her daughter at her house with her daughter. We were like 12 or 13 years old. Just just as the old people say, fast, right? Just being fast and trying to be grown. And we was in her room. Her name is Nikki. We was in Nikki's room. And these boys came over. They weren't in the house. They was talking to us outside the, outside the screen, right? This is my mother's first time hearing this. Just don't look at her. Don't even look at her. Don't even look at her. Don't even look at her. The, but Shonda, the mother, is like, but back then, you know, you, you trying to be cute. You trying to be grown. The boys was outside talking. And her mother must have been, as mothers do, outside of her door listening. What she said was, Mashonda, Nikki, y'all know y'all shouldn't be doing that. And we always made fun of her because she had this high voice. Y'all know y'all shouldn't be doing that. Mashonda, you know Prince is going to kill you. (laughs) Why? Because she knew my mother. She knew how my mother raised her children, right? So when I see Christians sometimes as not very Christ-like, I'll be like, Christians, y'all know y'all shouldn't be doing that. Y'all shouldn't be doing that, right? Because we what? We know better. 
we know Jesus. We, we know the characteristics of Jesus. And so we know the things that don't look very Christ-like, right? We had an experience recently. We had gone to Woman Evolve, and those of you who, who went with me, y'all know what I'm talking about. When you think you're getting together with people of like-minded faith, right, 40,000 women come together to worship God, right? We were so excited for every bit of the conference, every single day of the conference. Well, that first or second day, I can't remember what, what day it was exactly, but second <laughs> I ain't going to tell y'all why she know. But the second day, it was 40,000 people there, right? So you can save seats. Everybody is, you get there early, and you get your seat, and you sit down. And you have your team or whoever you're with to save your seat. And you go to the concession stand because we're getting there early. That day, there was a, a, it was a row in front of us, a group of girls. They said they were going wherever, to the concession stand or whatever. Ask some of us in our team to hold their seat, right? So. As Satan does, he came in and tried to interrupt and try to disturb us and distract us. He sent, it was two girls. We're in a Christian event, right? We all came to worship God in a corporate atmosphere, right? The word of God was incredible. That was the atmosphere to receive healing or whatever you needed in that moment, right? It was so incredible. One of the top five in my life. And here they come down the down the aisle and they took those seats so somebody in our group very nicely said oh these seats are taken they looked at each other and they was like no they yeah you're right they sat in those seats and so we kept trying to tell them hey like these seats are taken we're at a Christian event understand Christ like will be like oh, okay sorry didn't know and go find you another seat they sat there the whole time. They sat there the whole time. And not only did they sit there, it was a very nasty spirit. Very nasty spirit. So the people whose seats that it was, they came. They was trying to tell them that that was their seat. Had a little exchange, kept going. Um, but I was distracted for about 20 minutes. Like, Really, really, really distracted. And then I found myself not even paying attention to the word. I wasn't even listening to I couldn't even see past. Y'all need to get out them seats. These are not y'all seats. Not realizing that I had become what I hate. Right? So I'm sitting there 20 minutes, and that thing was stirring in me. But my Holy Spirit gave me the forethought, like, you grab them out the seat, y'all getting arrested, you going to jail, you going to get a mug shot, you going to have to call your husband, he going to have to get you out of jail. All, like, in, like, three seconds. I mean, he sped that thing up for me for me to see. This action, this action going to lead to that. The end of the action was going to be, he going to have to get us out of jail. Why? Because my flesh had risen to, like, because... It's, it's so bad when Christians do it because we don't expect it from Christians, right? We don't. That's where it hurts so bad because it's just like, you know, you're in a worldly event. I expect the world to be the world. But in the church, in the kingdom, in Christendom, we expect you to act like who? Christ. When I wasn't at, at, at that moment, I wasn't, I'm telling you, my mind was just snatch them out the seat real quick because it ain't they seat. But it really, it, it really was just a demonic distraction and get get me off of what I came there to get. And so once God brought me back full circle, I was able to get back into the spirit. And then what even made me angrier was doing praise and worship. They had Bibles, and they was lifting their hands and praising, and it was just, it was, it was confusing, to say the least. It was like, what is, I, I, I was so shocked that they had Bibles. I don't know. Because sometimes when people don't act like Christ or Christians, I figure, what? Have you ever said, what Bible are they reading? Like, what are they, where, what exactly? Where does that come from? It, it, just, it just threw me off. And I think part of that is growing up in church. And I'm going to give you all another scripture for those of you who are waiting because I understand that. Um, I'm going to, um, I just don't understand it. And I even though I've become it, so it's easy. I saw a thing before that said, 
um, don't judge people for sinning differently than you do. You know, because we do. As Christians, as Christians, sometimes we can be so super judgmental. I may do that, but I don't do that. Right? I don't do that, but I don't do that. I may do that, but I don't do that. And it is no difference. It is carnal Christians. Let me describe to you what I mean when I say mean. Christians should not be mean or nice, nasty, right? That's even worse to me, right? It's you, you like either, I'd rather you just be all out nasty. Because when you're nasty, it's kind of like a, oh, 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 just, just, just be, choose which one you want to be. But don't mix them together. Mean, by mean, I mean purposely offensive, selfish, passive aggressive, malicious, right? And so when I begin to ask God, like, what makes us mean? What makes us mean? Like when I went through those pictures of me being a child and going through and thinking about some of the things that I went through and some of the things that caused me to be kind of cynical about certain things, just like, mm, Mm, what? You ever talk to somebody about something? They're like, mm, must be nice. That's not positive, right? That's kind of that's kind of nasty. You mean it that way. So God brought me back to childhood, even in those pictures. And I begin to study something called ACEs. Those of you who are social workers and work in psychology, you know what an ACE is, an adverse childhood experience. According to the CDC, the study said 60% of American adults, and this was taken in 2019, have experienced an ACE, an adverse childhood experience. And some examples of an ACE are physical abuse, physical neglect, sexual abuse, verbal abuse, emotional neglect, house members who are depressed or diagnosed with other mental illness, and a family member who's in prison. That is astounding because I'm sure... An some of us, majority of us, have experienced at least one of those events, right? And those things, those type of things kind of make you like, you don't really want to be that way, but you just, you just mean, you just mad, you're hurting. But we forget sometimes in those situations that we got Christ. We are Christ followers for the most of us. And for those of you who have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will have the opportunity today. But for those of us who do, we don't have an excuse, right? Because he knew, do you think it take, caught him by surprise that you was going to have an adverse childhood experience? He knew it because it's all a part of your purpose. He doesn't waste anything. The good, the bad, the painful, right? But it's no excuse for us to be mean. We're supposed to be an example of Christ, right? There is an ACE test, and, and I think they have it on the screen. You can go to that website, and I would encourage you all to take it. It's very enlightening to see where you are. It, it attributes to how we think the way we think, what our viewpoint and our personal perspective on certain things. It is very, very enlightening. It helped me, I tell you the truth. It helped me because I can look back on years where I was, like, like I said, not the nicest. But God, right? But God, like we can know all of this stuff, but he's given, he sent us his son. Yes, it hurts. Yes, it wasn't your fault. It, it, it wasn't fair, but we are followers of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sometimes we view the world through a prism of pain. Like we can sit in church all our lives and you can hear the word. You can go to the altar over and over and over again. But until you make the decision or fall to your knees and ask God to help you deal with this pain. Because what I found is that most people who are mean like that, they really don't want to be. It's a protective mechanism, right? It's a protective mechanism to keep people out. Because I let people in and they hurt me. But we're supposed to draw people in because God gave us each other. That cross is vertical and horizontal, right? When people say stuff like, I don't fool, that's why I don't fool with people. No, he wants you to fool with people. <laughs> He's in the people business. Amen. 
And we have to keep that in mind. I know it feels safe to be in your own little bubble or you pick and identify one or two. Now, she's safe. He not. This one's safe. That one's not. But what if God called you to be with them? We're telling him no because he sees the bigger picture. We just see a little bit. And we don't have grace for each other. It is after we've gone through these aces and and other situations in life, you got about 1.2 more times to do something to me. 1.2. I can't math, but I don't know how much that is. 1.2. And it's already a label, and you're done, right? And we don't give each other grace, but we want grace. When we mess up, we want grace. We want God to give us all the grace in the world, right? Or the people to give us all the grace. I said I was sorry. What else do you want? No, that's not the attitude we're supposed to have as Christ followers, right? We have to forgive. Pain makes us mean, some of us, so mean, so bitter, and so carnal. If you could turn over to Romans 8, 1 for me. And it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What is walking after the flesh? Being mean and mad? Because the spirit sure ain't that, right? The spirit is soft and patient. And I'm not, you know, I asked pastor, is it a bad word to say punk in right here? And he said, no, it's not a cuss word. But being a Christian ain't no punk. You, you, it, you, it's, it's hard. It is not easy. It's not easy. And I think the remnant is what he's talking about when he talks about the remnant. Because few of us are really just like, okay, all right. Yeah, that hurt. I'm going to keep going, though. Yeah, they did it. I'm going to keep going, though. We have to give, extend people grace, especially when we want grace ourselves. Because we are in this human body. We're going to mess up. We're going to make a mistake, right? Carnal, fleshly, sensual, right? And Romans 8, verse 5, chapter 1, verse 5, it says, for they, are, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit mind the things of the spirit, right? The things of the capital spirit. I don't know about all these other spirits, but I'm talking about the Holy Spirit. And this is what the Bible is talking about. And every time I translated this, it was the capital S. The Holy Spirit. Verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Verse 8, so then they that are flesh cannot please God. And I looked up that word enmity. Those of us who are women and we've studied in um, Genesis, he said he will put enmity between the woman and the serpent, right? You remember that? That word enmity means a deep-rooted hatred. So when we're operating in the carnal and the flesh, we have a deep-rooted hatred for God and the things of God. And we don't like to think about it like that. Like, I don't hate God. I don't hate God. Um, this Bible say you do. <laughs> this Bible says you do if you're operating in a carnal, fleshly mentality. A deep, not just hatred. Do y'all get that? It's a deeply rooted hatred for God and the things of God when we're operating in a carnal, fleshly way. And a holy, a re- revelation and a re- relationship with the Holy Spirit, sometimes don't, don't he get you together quick? It's like, now you know you shouldn't have said that. You can walk away, but I meant it. I meant that thing because she should have left me alone. <laughs> but when we have a relationship with him, you can't even feel right. Just can't even like, oh. Because it comes with a whole bunch of, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to, what had happened is I didn't have breakfast. So I'm tired. Uh, they been messing with me. And I said the next time I saw them, I was going to get them right. And you just walked right into it. We can't do that. We don't have an excuse, Christians. We don't. We don't. Unless you're saying, I like Christmas. Just say you like Christmas. Don't say I'm a Christian. I like Christmas. Everybody like Christmas for the most part, right? That's okay. Just say it. Just say you like Christmas. The devil is not afraid of people going to church. Understand me. Y'all can have perfect attendance in here. Every single Sunday, every single Sunday. 
He's not afraid of people coming to church. He is afraid of people looking like Jesus. And that's our goal, right? <laughs> that's our goal, to look like Jesus. We don't know. I, I don't know about any other church or any other ministry. I say this all the time. When you have certain parents, you can't get away with what your friends get away with, right? Dominion, we cannot be like any other ministry. We are a duplication of his son in every sense of the word and what that looks like. Amen. So that means we're learning what that looks like. He's not afraid of us sitting in church because people sit in church all the time. People sit in church their entire life and never change. You remember when they used to say, you're no more a Christian going to church than a car sitting in the garage or you sitting in the garage being a car? That is so true. Turn over with me to 2 Timothy 3 in the King James Version 3.1. And this is one through seven. I'm going to read through these quickly. He said, this, I, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Perilous means full of danger and risk. Are we here now? Yes. Verse two, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, carnal, covetous boasters, proud blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Verse three, without natural affection, truce breakers. False accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of God, godliness but lacking the power thereof, from such turn away. Verse 6, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead silly women, silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, like, means like any kind of lust, different kind of lust. And verse 7 is what I want to get to. Ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth. You can sit in church ever learning and never come into the knowledge of truth. You can sit in church and leave here. And by the time you get to your car, you clowning. Nasty. Clowning. You go to the grocery store, somebody accidentally bump into you. You about ready to fight. What about all that word we just got? Ever learning, ever learning, never coming in into the knowledge of truth. And then in 1 Corinthians 13, the King James Version, he says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity, which is love, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal, meaning you're just making a whole bunch of noise. I'm a Christian. Clank, 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 clank. I like Christmas. Clank, 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 clank. Ever learning, ne just never talking about nothing. What is it? Say, talking loud, saying nothing. Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels and have not charity love, I am become sounding brass and tinkling symbol. symbol. Verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and not have charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods, you can give all of your stuff away and you can take all your pictures and put them on Facebook that you fed the homeless. All my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profited nothing. Nothing. Christians, nothing. We did all of that. We spoke in tongues. We danced all to and fro. We speak in King James Version when we're talking to people regularly. Quoting scriptures, you ain't living. Sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. It is a spirit that has been released, and, and I did I did a, a minimal study because I have the benefit of being um, having been a member and as well as being in church leadership. Right, church hurt. Y'all heard of that? Church hurt. That thing is real. And, and I will never deny anybody's experience with it. But something I know that church hurt is not when your pastor corrects you. That's not church hurt. Because if you're a clown and acting a fool, that's not church hurt, right? But there are some things that we all as a body have experienced that hurt. Because like I said earlier, you do not expect certain things to happen in the church. 
It should not be happening in the church. But guess what? We have work hurt. We go every single day, don't we? Every day. We don't miss it. We be on time for the most part. We have work hurt for years and years and years, and we retire and get our SSI check or whatever, Social Security check, and you've been hurt for four decades, but you keep going, and you sit in your desk and you shut your mouth, don't you? Exactly. Exactly. But when it comes to, <laughs> but when it comes to church, it's, it's, it's even touchier, and I get it. I get it. I promise I get it because I've been on both ends. That's, it, it's real and it does hurt. However, we cannot, anywhere there are people, well, you got to know there you're subject to some hurt. Because you get hurt and you gave that man 75,000 chances. Right? So we have to get this thing right. So when we, when we are saying that we have church hurt, yes, we have to expect it, unfortunately. It shouldn't happen. We always say the church is the hospital. But then I had that mindset, too. Like, I'm just going to stay home. I'm going to worship my God. And I can do praise and worship in my room. It's so good. Baby. Me, me, myself, and Jesus. Long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. Right? But we do. We do. And, 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 I, and I submit to you that that is an attack and a strategy of the enemy to make you feel like it's no, you can go church to church to church to church. Something's going to happen that's going to rub you the wrong way. And honestly, what church hurt is, is offense. It's offense. And we've all been offended at some point. But we have to be a little bit more long suffering when it comes to the people of God. Oh, I know. I know, right? Because I used to be like, oh, God, your kids, I don't like them. Oh, they bad. <laughs> but we have to be a little bit more long-suffering in the kingdom. And I don't know, we cannot speak for anybody else, but in DMI, it is a requirement. We have to. We got to give people some grace. We got to forgive. Maybe they're not your people, and it's okay they're not your people, per se, in terms of a personal life and hanging out with them and going to dinner and going to a movie, but they're God's people. And so we have to treat, like with my children, I don't play that. I'm not, they, okay, you're going to have a little bit of, a little bit of uh, uncomfortable, just, I don't really deal with that person, I don't, but um, the six, y'all got the same blood, I don't know, how you, how you going to not deal with somebody that don't, that got your blood? You know, I mean, I have family members that, we have the same blood, but I love them so they can call me today, and I'm going to be there, but I'm not about to hang out with y'all all the time, I'm not. Because, I mean, I need, a, I need a vacation after I get done hanging with some of them. But I love them. You know you love them. You love them because they're your family. They're your people. That is the same way God is in the kingdom. We have to treat each other kind. We have to love each other. We have to at least be respectful. Like, how much it costs you to say hi to somebody? And it's so crazy that people in the kingdom, can you can just walk past, even, not even in the kingdom, in your own same church, and not even say hi. How? How? I don't understand. Church hurt. Please do not stop loving God just because someone who claimed to represent God misrepresented him. People fail. God does not. And then we have people say, no, I, I love God. He said, hey, you a liar. That's what he said. Y'all can read your own Bible. That's what he said. He said, how can you love me and you can't even see me? But your brother or your sister, let's do better. The more I get a revelation of him, the more, the softer I want to be. The more loving, I, I, can't, I can't help it. Like, I'm, I'm going to go against Mashonda's own, all of this other crazy stuff because of what God commanded us to do, no matter the experience. And I can't tell y'all that this happened overnight. I mean, like, I, and I don't want y'all to think that we are pumping therapy, therapy, therapy. That's what works for me. That's what changed my mind. That's what changed my heart. Because guess what? God created the therapist, and he just so happened to send me to the right one to give me exactly what I needed to make me examine me. 
I can't speak for anybody else. It's enough this, all of this to deal with before I start. You, 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 and you. Let me get this together first. Let you get this together first, right? And we're all working to get our own selves together, and we come together for the main purpose of worshiping our Father. Unstoppable. Unstoppable. I don't want this church right here, this local body, to be known as, you know, they're nasty over there. They don't even speak. They can't even speak. Well, who, who what? When I hear that, it, it, it blows my mind. I was at a pastors and leadership conference with all the first ladies, right? And I was so excited because it was my first time. I was the first lady. I was by myself. And I got my seat right. And when I tell you I got looked up and down like you don't belong here. Well, what? Right. <laughs> right. I mean, I, or, or I get all the time, you don't look like a first lady. What does that look like? Can you, can you see my heart? Because that looks like, that looks like a first lady. The first, the, what I know of and some of the examples that I've had, right, it is it's sad. And, and, I, and I cry sometimes because if I feel, like, grieved, I can't imagine how God feels in his house. I can't even imagine. Because you ain't got to go far to get rejected. It's as near as your local church. Unfortunately, we have to do better saints. We cannot have it. I can't speak for the universal church. I do believe that God is doing something in the universal church and messages like these are coming forth and we are examining ourselves. But I would encourage you to study yourself to change, to, to endeavor, to do better, to examine your thought processes. Go back and do this ACE test and see what happened to you. What happened to you? It wasn't right, but we have to examine what happened to us to teach us who we are, why we are the way we are, why we think the way we think, and then we have to change. We have to make the changes because we cannot continue to say that we are a Christ follower and we look worse than the world. I had we, we went out to dinner one Sunday after church, and I had the waitress tell me, you went to church today? And I said, yes, we went to church. And she was like, well, you're so nice. We're supposed to be. What happened? She said, on Sundays, I get the worst customers. It's so sad. It's so sad. I tipped her real big in an attempt to try to change her mind on that. But that had been her experience. That's sad. It should not be saints, church of God, caller, followers of God. What did he say? He said he called us his very own possession, meaning we are God's property, right? And as a result, we sh we're supposed to be showing others the goodness of God. For he called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. We're not in darkness. So what you mad for? What we mad for? What are we angry for? Because we're hurt. Let's deal with the hurt and be a Christian, a Christ follower. Amen. The church is where a place where safety is expected. And like I said earlier, at Dominion, it's a requirement. And I was getting ready to say I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, not sorry. It's a requirement. And we're under construction here. Right? We, we, we declared reset about, what, five or six months ago? So pretend like you got on a hard hat and pretend like you see the cranes and, and you smell paint and, and, and a jackhammer because this whole, forget about this physical building, spiritual, this local body from the leaders on down. We are under construction. We are going to be examining some things and examining our hearts. Because if we don't look like Christ, who are we looking like? Who are we looking like? But he already told us who we are, a duplication of his son. I say to my son all the time because he's just he does so many things like my, my husband is scary sometimes. His deoxyribonucleic acid won't let him do nothing else because he is Bruce Lee Moxley's son, right? We are Jesus Christ's sons and daughters. Our deoxyribonucleic acid looks like Jesus Christ. Okay? 
All right, so we look like him, we act like him, we talk like him. We are his seed. The Bible says that they told the disciples, I know you was with Jesus because your speech betrays you. Your speech betrays you. You talk just like him. I know you was with him. Our speech betrays him. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. Can you all give God a hand? I am so excited about what God is doing in this church. We are under construction. I'm telling you, I told you all last week, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor entered into the heart of men all the things that God has in store for us. And then he reminded us again in Revelation 3.22 that he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the Lord says to the churches. Amen. Wasn't that an incredible word? The Bible says in Psalms 119.11 that we hide his word in our hearts so that we don't sin against him. If this is your first time joining us, you can point your camera to the QR code that says join. If this message impacted you in any way, you can point your QR code to give, where you can be a part of our community and, and what we are doing in our community to give back. And if you would like for us to pray for you, please point your camera to the QR code that says prayer, and we will be sure to pray fervently for you. If you would like to join us on any of our socials, you can join us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We have thoroughly enjoyed you being with us. We pray that you have an amazing week, and we will see you next week.